guys good morning happy monday i was going to come on tomorrow but it's just going to be better for me to come back on today guys to release this video for this week um i'm doing laundry while that's drying um i'm going to come on and do the video i do apologize <laughs> about all the noise i'm parked in the um, plaza i dropped the kids to school doing laundry after this i gotta go get a few groceries for justice and some little stuff that we need then i'll should be able to head to the library gas station after that and then i should be able to head to the library for a couple hours to do what i need to do work on what i need to work on then i go pick up justice and get the kids from school but our scripture for this week our scriptures sorry guys for this week i am still a little sleepy too but our scriptures for this week we're going to be talking about grace this is week three um week one we focus on scriptures like on thanksgiving thankfulness if you missed that video check it out um Week two, we focus on scriptures on mercy. And this week, we're focusing on scriptures on grace. Next week, we'll focus on scriptures on favor. Um, we did have our Bible study last night. I, I really enjoyed it. We had our Bible study on Psalms 2 and Psalms 7. I will announce um, sometime this week. I'm not sure when, but I will announce when our next one will be. It'll definitely be this upcoming, this not this upcoming week, this actual week. But I'll announce the day, the date and the time for that one. And we'll be coming from Psalms 91 and Psalms 93 for the Bible study for for that. But now, guys, I want to give you guys the scriptures on grace. I prayed for you guys this morning. I've been praying for you guys. Thank you all that have been praying for me, sowing, um, commenting, viewing, just applying these principles to your life, whatever way it has been. Thank you, and I love you guys. So our scriptures of grace, on grace, you guys taking notes, number 6, 24 through 26 is one that we're going to be coming from today psalms 103 verse 8 1 peter 5 10 titus 2 11 through 12 and isaiah 30 18 so those are the five that we're going to be focusing on for this week and you guys that have been applying them i've been noticing like i when i've been going um back over the videos over the notes i've been applying them to like my personal situation my personal season what you know i, I noticed like i'm seeing the word kind of like come alive more if that makes sense you know like and really uh, like really applying it and like just really seeing how it works throughout that week i've been noticing that with the thanksgiving ones the mercy ones and even as far as grace because we all need more grace i know i definitely need some more grace amen more grace more grace so let me know like which ones you guys have been applying and you know what's been standing out to you how has it um you know personally been a blessing you know to you guys hold on one second all righty guys sorry about that so um let's go to number 6 24 through 26 number 6 24 through 26 guys bear me one more second i'm sorry apologize about that so numbers number 6 24 through 26 guys and we have read it in its entirety a couple of times it's talking about the nazarite and some other things but i want to focus on the priestly blessing the priestly blessing starts at verse 22 it goes on like 22 to 26 actually i read 22 through 27 but our focal point guys is 24 through 26 so it said the lord said to moses tell aaron and his sons this is how you are to bless the israelites say to them the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you you know give you grace be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace and 27 says so they will put my name on the israelites and i will bless them but I want to focus in on 24 through 26 and I want to read it again. And I also want you guys to be receiving these scriptures for yourself as well. Like I'm sure many of you do. But the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Right? The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. That's one of my favorite scriptures. And it's one that, you know, has encouraged me over the years and just often encourages me. So that's number six, 24 through 26. And then another beautiful thing is like, who better than to have God turn his face toward you and be gracious to you and give you grace? Like, who better than God to bless you? Who better than God to, you know, give you peace? Who better than God? Like, you know, he loves you. You know, he cares. You know, he have pure motives. Like, you know, you don't have to question him. You know, we go through things sometimes where we may have questions, 
But as far as questioning the nature of God, we don't have to question his nature because we know who he is. Like we know his love for us. We know his love towards us. You know, so I hope you guys were encouraged by that number six twenty four through twenty six. The next one, the next verse that we're gonna focus on is Psalms one oh three verse eight. Psalms one oh three verse eight is the next one, guys. And let me go there. And let me I wanna come back and read that for me. Just bear with me a second, guys. Okay, Psalms one oh three verse eight. Okay, it says, it says, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. I want to read that again. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. So this week, guys, as you meditate on these scripture verses, I want you to remember that with that Psalms 103 verse 8. And make it personal, like over yourself, over your family, over your spouse, over your loved ones, whatever the situation is. Maybe someone that, you know, God just place, places on your heart. You know, God is compassionate. Like, he is compassionate towards you. He's gracious. So, you need compassion. You need grace. Turn to God. Because he's going to be slow to anger, abounding in love. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. You know, there is nothing that you can do that's like so far out where it's like, you know, well, we know like we can't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. That's I think that's like the, un the impartable, the unforgivable sin or, you know, but I'm saying no, what I'm saying is no matter whatever season or state you're in mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, relationally, like no matter where circumstance, situation you may be dealing with or going through. You can turn to God because God will be compassionate towards you. The Lord is compassionate. He'll be gracious towards you. He's slow to anger, abounding in love. Like God is love. Like there's a scripture in the Bible talking about you can't say that you love God who you've never seen before, but you hate your brother who you can see. You know, who can, you can physically see, you know, and God is love. Like in, in that, um, that other scripture, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You know, so if you cry out to God and you just seek him and you turn towards him and you just cry out for him. God knows how to meet you where you are and get you where you need to be. He knows how to get you through it. He knows how to just love on you like he knows what you need. He is compassionate so he will give you compassion. You know, he is love, so he will give you love. He is gracious, so he know how to give you grace. Okay, so I want to read that again. And the reason why I'm reading them over again and reiterating them is because I'm trying to drive it in for someone. You know, the more you hear something, the more it'll kind of like ring in your ears. You know what I mean? So the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Okay, so that's Psalms 103 verse 8. And the next one, I love this one, First Peter 5.10. I really like all of them, but I really love First Peter 5.10. I'm going to go there now. Then we'll have two more scriptures after this. Peter. First Peter. Bear me a second, guys, because you guys know I'm literally um, flipping in my Bible. So First Peter in this full context, and we did read Peter before. It's talking about in this full context to elders and young men. And that Psalms 103, also, we read that before. It's talk, in this fullness, it's talking about a bunch of different things. But I just wanted us to focus on the verses that God said, which was verse 8. But I want to read, um, for First Peter, I want to read 5 through 10. Really, I want to read um, 6 through 10, but the focal point is 10. And yes, 6 through 9 is talking about some other things. I just feel like that would be an encouragement for someone this morning. So I'm just going to throw that in there. But our focal point as far as grace is going to be verse 10. Let's read 10 and 11. Okay. So humble yourselves. I'll just start at 6. But keep in mind 10 is the focal point. But I'm going to read 6 through 11. Just bear with me this morning, guys. Y'all know I love the word. And I try to give y'all 
a little bit more word, you know, but I do feel like this six through nine will be encouragement for someone. So humble yourselves because if five is talking about um, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble, that's Proverbs 334 and it's talk about some other things with the young man. But humble yourselves, six reading on, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him or all your cares on him, like whatever you're dealing with, cast it on him because he cares for you. So that was 6 and 7. Verse 8 and 9 says, Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So he's looking, he's seeking. Like if I'm out looking for you, I'm seeking you. Right? So resist him, standing firm in the faith. Because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. So a lot of times, one second guys. I'm sorry about that, guys. You know how some people just, they just got a stunt when they get in their car and blast and everything. Okay, amen. But if I'm looking for you and I'm seeking and I'm seeking after you, I'm, I'm, if I'm looking for you, I'm seeking you. So look, resist him. Let's get into nine. Resist him. Standing firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's what I wanted to say. When you're dealing with things... And you feel like, you know, you're all alone or only, you know, like it's only you, you know, that's dealing with it. You like the enemy wants you to have this woe is me mentality, like pity yourself, stay in the pity party. But you're not the only one going through it. You may be the only one going through it the way that you're going through it. Or maybe you really like feel like you are alone, but you're not. And the enemy will try to play head games with you. But we're all dealing with sufferings. We're all dealing with trials. We're all dealing with something, especially as believers. You know, some people say, well, when I was in the world, I went through. But it seemed like when I came and joined this side, the kingdom of God side, I'm going through more. You didn't switch sides. You didn't switch kingdoms. You didn't switch worlds. So you can't think that you're not going to go through anything. And then like the people of this world that belong to this world that don't want anything to do with the Lord. You know, they don't make Jesus their Lord and Savior and change their ways and repent and seek after him. Then their home for eternity is going to be hell and eternal damnation. You know, so it's not saying that we're going to be going through all the time. God has rewards for us in this life and in the life to come. But eternity is forever. Like I always tell you guys and been telling you guys that, you know, for a long time. And, you know, the Bible's talking about in the scripture these, I forgot, I don't know if it's in Corinthians or Romans, I don't know, but it's, it's in there talking about these light and momentary afflictions, you know, basically they don't compare with the, with the glory of God. They don't compare with the future glory. I, I didn't say it correctly, but you guys will know what I'm talking about with that one, right? These light and momentary things that we're dealing with, it's not going to compare you know what I mean? So I want to read 9 again. It says, resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Okay? Verse 10 says, and here's when we get on this grace one. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast 11 says to him be the power forever and ever amen so i hope you guys was encouraged by that first peter 5 10 and the god of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you god himself will do it will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast amen so let's go to titus and then i'll um get off of here guys and i'll go up Go in and get the laundry and then do the rest of the errands like I said I was going to do. Um, Titus 2, 11 through 12. Let me go there one second, guys. Got to flip. Give me one second, guys. Okay, guys. I found it. Titus 2 in this full content is talking about what must be taught to various groups. But I want to focus on 11 and 12. To get it in this full context, you guys can read like verses 1 through 10. But I just want to focus on verse 11 through 12. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, 
It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-control. One second. God. I guess this is just the morning for that, right? <laughs> I'm going to go back. 11 through 12. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Okay. Verse 12 says, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-control upright in godly lives in this present age. I have to read 13 and 14 because it's a comma. And if it's a comma, you, that means you have to keep going on. While we, Because I don't like reading things out of context. While we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, 14, who gave himself who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own eager to do what is good. And you know, guys, that verse, um, I'm thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm just looking at this, this verse 12 last night. Um, after I gave justice his bath and he was eating, I was washing the dishes, like taking out the garbage. We was kind of preparing for bed, you know, cause he had school, um, to have school for today. So, I was listening to Jesse Duplany's, um message. He preached a long time ago, but I think he like redid it again or something. He re-uploaded it or something like from years ago. And it was called, what in, what in hell do you want? And you know, this, this 12 is sticking out to me with that. If you guys haven't listened to that, I encourage you to check it out. He was talking about what in hell do you want? And I listened to, um, there's different snippets. Like it's one for 30 minutes. It's one for like an hour. It's one for like 20 something minutes. I think I was listening to the one for the hour. So I could fully get it. But I only was able to listen to like 34 minutes. I got to listen to the rest today. Because I got busy yesterday. And then with justice and everything. And once I laid down. I just kind of like laid down. And I put the phone on the charge. That's why I didn't finish to it. Because justice was laying on me. I was saying once he fall asleep on me. I'll get up and listen to it. I ended up falling asleep. Because when I woke up this morning, I had so many like missed calls and emails and texts and stuff. I end up falling asleep because usually I try to, while I'm going to sleep, I try to listen to sermons and, you know, different things that's encouragement. If I'm not able to listen to it, I'll try to like read or something before I go to bed or pray or something. But my phone was on the charger at the end of the bed. So that's why I wasn't able to listen to it because I end up falling asleep with him thinking, well, when he falls asleep, I'll get up and girl, I, I fell asleep. So... Yeah, but I want to focus again on um, 11 and 12. I did read 14 for you guys, so you can get in this full context. But I want to read 11 and 12 again. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-control upright in godly lives in this present age. Okay, and I read 13 and 14. You know, and you, know, you can't feel like you're going to... Um, you can't feel like you're going to be able to do it in your own strength. This is why we need Holy Spirit. This is why we need grace. This is why we need mercy. This is why we got to want God's spirit over our own flesh. This is why we got to want to daily surrender to God and take up our cross because it's not easy. You're going to be tempted. You're going to be tried, but there's no temptation that is uncommon to man. God will give us the way of escape. You know, and then at the end of the day, we always have a choice. We're going to always have a choice. We have free will. You know, you fall, you get back up again, and you keep going. But, you know, it. I feel like God doesn't give us grace for us to abuse his grace. Like, you know, for example, if you're being gracious with a person that you love, and we did so many videos and teachings on this, and I'm trying to wrap up this video now. But if you um, are gracious with your spouse, with certain um, hiccup that they have or something that y'all are trying to work through, and they're kind of like taking advantage of that because they know you're being gracious of that, at a certain time, that grace is like that boundary or that grace point is not going to always be there forever, especially if you know they're just abusing it because they can. You know, it's a difference of like you guys are working through it and they're trying to work through it or even like with your with a child or whatever. Whatever the situation may be, like another practical example, like, you know, I don't want to do too many examples this morning, but let me just give you this one. If you're constantly late to work 
you know, the boss has given you like three months, six months and their, their policy when they hired you, you know, you read certain things, you know, like how they feel about that. And you just taking it, their kindness for weakness. Like you just taking advantage of the fact that because you have that title or you good, you can just always be late to work. And it gets to a, a point now where it's not that you missed the alarm clock or it was traffic or you now you just. Oh, I know I can be late to work. I know I'm a star worker, so I'm just going to be late. You're deliberately doing this. At a certain point in time, that grace run out and they say, you know, we're going to put you on trial, probation, et cetera, et cetera. And you didn't abuse that because now, you, now you're manipulating your way through the situation. And then it comes to the point where they're going to demote you or fire you. You can't be looking at them weird if it's you that's purposely doing that because you're deliberately doing it. You're taking advantage of that grace. You know, so grace, <laughs> grace is there for a reason. It's like, a, it's like a blanket before the fall. It's a blanket for you to not have to fall. But if you're deliberately keep jumping off the cliff because you know the blanket is there, what's going to happen when that blanket is removed? How many times in the Bible have we seen that? How many times in your life or my life have we seen that? How many times in other people's life have we seen that? So it's not for us to abuse it. It's for us to use wisdom and follow God's leading and guiding. It doesn't mean we're perfect, but at the same time, it don't mean we're going to be abusing it. Because who wants someone to be abusing? Who, 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 which one of you want somebody to be abusing y'all kindness and weakness and grace and taking you for granted and doing all that? If we as humans have certain breaking points and limitations and boundaries how much more god we have read so many bible teachings and bible studies guys on these certain situations that we're even talking about this morning you know so that's just kind of something to think about now i'm going to close with um isaiah 30 18 it's the last one guys isaiah 30 18 somebody on here needs to read Isaiah chapter 35, it will bless you. It's talking about joy of the redeemed and some other things. Read that um, in your private time, whatever day you listen to this video or whenever you get some time this week to read it. Isaiah 35 and come back on here and let me know what you got out of it. But I want to focus on Isaiah, um, and I got to get breakfast after this too because I didn't even eat yet. Isaiah 30, 18 says, yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion for the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. And I'm going to read that one more time and then I'm going to get out of here. Yet the Lord longs, and I've been saying that, but it's just, if this plaza be so busy, guys, I can't wait to move. But um, yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Y'all keep that in prayers to my move for me and my son to like move into our next place. Because this whole two years, what I've been through these last two, three years, I'm talking about another level of surrender, another level of people life being changed and me going deeper with God too. But I mean, talking about the cost, guys, talking about the cost, but it's worth it. Isaiah 30, 18. I want to close with this. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion. Didn't we just read that a couple um, scriptures ago, guys? For the Lord is the God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Okay, guys. So that's our morning um, video for our scriptures on grace. Um, like I said, if you missed the other videos that we did this year, feel free to check them out. Or even our other ones that we've been doing with this um, this January series. We did three weeks so far, including today's video. So I'm happy. Next month, guys, you know we're coming from our purpose-driven life. And our live 12th live phone conference class is going to be on the 25th. I'm probably going to put these things in the description box as well. Um, yeah. But I love you guys. I'm going to get off of here. Y'all have a beautiful, blessed day and a beautiful, blessed week if I'm not back on. God bless.